Hey, this is uh, Psychical and Oblico. So we just wanted to go over some recent announcements in gaming and some recent news and maybe a few upcoming games and just give the news and then maybe give our opinion on it. Alright, should we just jump straight in? Uh, sure. So the first thing I wanted to discuss was, uh, like, so did you hear that the new 3DS is going to still be region locked? I did. Yeah. Uh, um... So I I've got to give it to Nintendo. They're, they're definitely sticking to their guns where everything else is pretty much opened up by now. But, like, I guess, I guess it's a good idea with um, how they're releasing their games in separate times at separate countries still, in most cases, aside from, like, Pokemon. Um, whereas everything, everything, like, the other consoles are getting released at the same time around the world. Here, they're, like, a couple of days. So region locking isn't really a big deal anymore for the other consoles. But because I'd say, like, Nintendo has more of a Japan fan base, like, it just makes the whole region locking thing just kind of make sense. Hang on, I'm having trouble understanding that, because if you're, when you say Japan fan base, do you mean people living in Japan or people in the United States who like content from Japan? No, uh, basically, like, well, let, let's face it, over in Japan, like, Nintendo games get released before anywhere else. Yes. Like, Nintendo has a bigger fan base in Japan than anywhere else. Like, US is a close second, but that's why, like, because they're, they're going to get, like, Hyrule Warriors, for example. Um, we'll cover more on that in a bit, but that's getting released in Japan first. Now, if they didn't region lock stuff like that, um, then you just go over and buy the game in Japan and uh, just change the setting into English, and it would kind of make the whole thing pointless. Is that really a problem, though? I mean, they're still getting the sale from the game, so does it really just break them up that badly if someone wants to import the game from a different region? I'd say from our point of view, it's not. But in, in, like I say, in, the, in the long sense, like it, uh, basically, it'll all come down to in you know, the difference in price as well. Like over in America, a new game costs what sixty dollars. Yes. Yeah. Over here, uh, about a hundred to hundred and twenty dollars. So is that taking into account the conversion rate? Uh yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that before. Just it still kind of surprises me just to hear that the games cost that much over there. Yeah, it's it's not fun being an Australian gamer. Low internet, uh, slow internet, and uh, high prices. But um. I'd say, I'd say that would be their biggest point is because, like, they know their consoles aren't going to sell as much as the, like, Sony and Microsoft does. So, so it's hard to transfer the hardware. So, like, by having them region locked, it seems like with the conversion rates and the money difference, they're able to get more of a monetary value for their hardware and software. So they want to keep the region locking so they can price gouge people in Australia and Europe? That, that, that's about the only logical reason I can think to still have something region locked, honestly. So I'm going to read a quote from Nintendo President Edent Awada. There are many different regions around the world, and each region has its own cult cultural acceptance and legal restrictions, as well as different age restrictions. There are always th things that we are required to do in each different region, which may go counter t to the idea that players around the world want the freedom to play whatever they want. I mean, what kind of bugs me is that they're acting like this is a benefit to the consumer, like, oh, you know, they would be so offended if people were importing games from other regions, and they would, and there, there are just all these legal barriers in place that we can't possibly get around, but, you know, Microsoft and Sony now are disabling the region lock and allowing people from any region to play it, so it's not as if they're incapable of doing it. And the Nintendo DS on the DS Lite models and earlier models, and I believe the Game Boy as well, didn't have any form of region logging. So it just annoys me that they're acting like this is some sort of legal requirement that they're going to do. And yet, when really it's just this business decision so they can price gouge people in certain nations. And... Yeah, it's um, I basically how, how like Australia. Australia's um, 
like their like standards and everything in video games it is it is a bit higher than everywhere. Like we had trouble with Saints Row 4 and Stick of Truth over here. Like games like Manhunt as well didn't get released here at all. Um, even even uh, Darkness 2, even that was a bit questionable. That took a little bit longer to come out. But I don't really see any problem like with Nintendo games. Like they might have to drum up a bit in uh, games like. Um, the Xenoblade Chronicles and stuff like that just tidied up a bit, but no, nothing drastic. Like Stick of Truth had to change like half the game so it could be released in Australia. But like even even that, like it's still a company that came out. I think it would came out within the same week as the rest of the world in Australia. That's what's so ironic about it is that Nintendo seems like it has the least reason of the three major video game console manufacturers to impose a region lock but they're the only ones still doing it. Yeah, which, that's what I mean, like, it, it only the only thing that I can see coming out of it is more money for them. Like, I can't think of another logical reason. I can't really think of one. Well, I guess, like, there's some, uh, some companies that are solely dedicated to translating the game and publishing it in a certain region like Atlas. So I guess their argument could be that if they allowed importing that it would harm these other uh, translation teams so they wouldn't have the enough money to translate and release a game in another nation if the fans could just import it from from Japan or whichever region it came out in first. Even still, that still seems like a small demographic of games. Like, I don't think it would Im impact that much. Like, it, it, it is it is a notable uh, notable idea, but it doesn't seem like that is your standalone reason to region lock something. I suppose so, but it's just one of the few rationales I can think of for still yeah. maintaining a region lock. <laughs> Because like I said, it's not as if uh, Nintendo and Microsoft are being sued by Australia for disabling a region lock, so it's not as if they legally have to do this. Yeah. No, it, it is quite interesting what, um, like, how, how they're going about it. I'll be interested to see, like, when they release more details and maybe dig up, see if we can find why, but um, from what they've re released um, at the moment... It's just kind of, it's a big grey area. They're speculating on reasons why. There's not many actual reasons why, but... Like, is it even really that grey of an area? I mean, like, Nintendo and... Sony has been doing this for years, and it hasn't been a huge issue. Well, and, not, say not, maybe not in the US, but, like, um, I'd say PS2 and the original Xbox would really have loved to import games because uh, it was mainly back in then is Australia actually missed out on a lot of games. Oh yeah, the PS2 was region locked, wasn't it? And I think the Xbox 360 was as well. It was just with the Xbox One they removed the region lock. I think uh, uh, Xbox 360 oh, was it region locked. I can't remember if it, if it was region locked or not. I know they had um, it's like region tagging with the Xbox Live account. Like, um, it kind of gets a bit suspicious if, like, one day you're in Canada and then one day you're in the US or, like... I'm pretty sure it is region locked. And I can't remember off the top of my head because, yeah, pretty live. Okay. It's been there on since the 360 because, like, pretty much all the games have come out. All right. But yeah, it's, ma it's mainly just like the PS2 and um, like the original Xbox. That, like, if it wasn't region locked, like Australian gaming would have probably taken off a lot more. Because yeah, we missed out on a fair bit for those titles. Mm, nice sound effect. <laughs> that was all part of the show. We totally planned that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I guess that's enough about. The region locking, but basically the simple version of that is region locking is bad and we don't like it. And so anyway, uh, other than that, uh, what is your opinion on the new 3DS? I've got to be honest, like, 
it, it probably it probably seemed really bad because I already own a 3DS, but as soon as I saw the coloured buttons, like it sold me straight away. Like just got nostalgic with the Super Nintendo. I was like, yeah, I'm buying that. So I didn't read any of the new features or anything. I saw those buttons and I was like, I want it. <laughs> are you aware of what the new features are? Uh, not not all of them. I have um, like there's more integration with the touchscreen, the Amiibo um, stuff, yeah, the maybe. second joystick. Uh, correct. Maybe I should go over all the features just for the viewers who aren't familiar with it. So it yep. has, like, it has the same coloring system as the, uh, I don't know if this is all the new 3DSs, but at least some of them are going to have the same coloring system as the uh, Super Nintendo controller. So mm. that's uh, green on the right, green on the left, sorry, blue yep. on the top, red on the right, and yellow on the bottom. Which is kind of nice. I think that's, in a sense, what uh, Sony and Microsoft are already doing with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One controllers. Uh, it's kind of reversed. It's uh, blue on the left, green on the bottom, red on the right, and yellow at the top. But I think, it, yeah. I think they're really just trying to draw back to that nostalgic feel from the Super Nintendo for it. Yeah. Which, as, as, it, as proven, it has worked. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't mean that the colors were the same, just that they... They're, they're, all three of them are using color-coded buttons. It's starting to distinguish away from it. Like, I've got the Xbox One controller sitting in front of me at the moment, and um, it seems to be more distinguished that it's a letter rather than, um, than a, like, a colored button than it was on the Xbox 360. And um, I'd say also on, like, the PS3 and the PS4, like, it's really... Um, They've kind of kept away from the colours, like they've always, it's been the triangle and the X button and the, the square and the circle button. They've never really, like, divulged it by colour. But that's, like, it's unique to Sony, everyone knew that, and, like, it's worked. Like, it's worked really well. But, um... Yeah, I'm really liking the new colours that for the buttons. That's That seems like a very good change. Though, yeah. So I another ch another change is you mentioned that they have the second analog stick, and then an yep. additional. They've also got two extra trigger buttons on the top. Oh uh, yeah, the the ZL and the ZR buttons that they're adding. Yeah, and they also got a a way to automatically read amiibos. And in case you don't know what those are, those are uh, little figurines that they have for Similar Smash Brothers. How yeah, they work. And like the whole Disney Infinity thing. Yeah, exactly like that. So I guess I'll go into those Amiibos a little more later. And they also have more detailed, th th or I guess I should say more refined 3D viewing. So like before on the 3DS, if you viewed it at the wrong angle, then it would kind of be taken out of the 3D. Like it only worked if you kind of viewed it at the exact right angle. But with the new 3DS, it's supposed to work where no matter or maybe not no matter, but you can tilt it a little bit and still... Yeah, well, there's more of a doing. Um, People noticed that it didn't work well with augmented reality. You'd have to hold it on this one angle and then kind of shift your entire body, where, whereas, like, if you move the 3DS, then the, the 3D was ruined. Yeah. So, yeah, fixing that will be good. But um, one thing I am curious about, I don't really, like, know what they're going to do for the functionality of the second joystick. Like, I don't really see the purpose of it. I guess it's just, like, the functionality that they have on the controllers, like like the PlayStation DualShock and the Xbox One controller, where usually it's to control the camera angle. I was going to say, with that... Like on the it seems that like the camera is always handled you haven't really always needed the second stick like mario games and everything for example like even in the newest one 3d world like it the right stick on the wii u gamepad was used to shift the camera to look at it from a different angle but you still didn't really control it the way like you would on an xbox or a ps um or any ps console i still think it's a benefit to be able to control it. Like generally, the Nintendo games have been pretty good with the camera angles, but I think being able to control it and look in different directions is even better. And so another thing is that if you, they also have this kind of awkward-looking peripheral that you can attach to your 3DS, I guess, to give it the extra analog stick and the extra uh, trigger buttons. 
it's kind of I think they had a peripheral like this that was exclusive to GameStop for the original 3DS, and then I guess now they're adding one for the 3DS XL. Yeah. Um, I, you know, one of my criticisms of this is it seems like they should have added the second analog stick with the 3DX XL, or better yet, even added it with the original 3DS, because it's kind of seems awkward that that in the with the original 3ds they knew that they wanted to add on this second uh, analog stick but then when the 3ds xl came out they still didn't add just integrate the extra stick in i mean it seems like that would be something that would well, be a no-brainer to put in at that point it seems like they didn't really have a use for it though like all the games on the 3ds i think um super mario um I think it's Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS. Is it? Um, I think it was that one. It could it it could have benefited from that second joystick. Some of the camera angles were a bit sketchy in that. I think Kid I think Icarus that. Uprising was one game that had it. But the main argument I'd make for that is that the reason they don't have it is because it's a peripheral that few people have. So why would they bother integrating? a feature that 90% of their audience couldn't even use. And I'd argue that if it was just built into the console, most of the games would have already had it. Yeah. Now, another thing, and this is the main problem that I have with the new 3DS, is they have this uh, additional hardware, which it's going to allow them to bring new games on the 3DS, but some of these games are going to be exclusive to the new 3DS. So, so far, the only one that's been announced that's exclusive to the new 3DS is uh, Xenoblade. But my guess is that there are going to be more games like this. So, I don't, I kind of take issue with that because it's kind of splitting their market in a way to say that the people who already bought the, you know, the 3DS or the 3DX XL, when you buy a console, you kind of expect that it's going to be able to play all of the current uh, games for at least the next uh, five years or so. And basically well, what they're saying is now just like... Th 3DS has been out now for what, three years? Three, Yeah, about three years. Yeah. So it's kind of early to be releasing a new iteration that's capable of playing new games. And another thing is like I'm kind of... Uh, and I guess my, myself and probably us and our audience understand that these are different games intended for different models. But, like, the casual market was even getting just the Wii and the Wii U mixed up. They were, I heard of people buying Wii U games expecting them to play on their Wii. So imagine how many people are going to buy games for the new 3DS expecting them to work on their original 3DS and getting disappointed when they don't work. It's like imagine all the little kids and all the soccer moms trying to get uh, games for their ki for their children, expecting this uh, new 3DS game to function because they have a 3DS. And oh, you didn't read that it specifically said new 3DS. It's, I don't think it's all that good of a name to be honest, because yeah, it seems they, like it'd be gonna, really easy to get the two mixed up. If they're gonna differentiate like the games like that, then they're gonna need to dif differentiate like the um, like how it's put across because you're exactly right. People are gonna get confused about that, and it it probably will be a problem. And it seems like they should have predicted this because this exact same thing happened with the Wii and the Wii U. Like they should have called it like I don't know Wii Two or something. I guess 3DS2 would sound a little silly. I can't think of a great name offhand, but it seems like they should have come up with something better than this. As long as they don't call it the 3DS, you will be happy. <laughs> yeah, that would be awful. Next thing we know, we'll get an announcement tomorrow about it being called that, so... But like, uh, it, it, it definitely does... Like, if I recall correctly, what was it? The the game original Game Boy had a life cycle that was pretty long, like it, like eight, nine something years before the Game Boy Color came out, and then the Game Boy Color lasted like. I guess this was the only time when they did this before. Was the Game Boy Color only lasted like 
what was it, like three to four years before the Game Boy Advance came out, but in general, when they release a console, it's three years or so before their next uh, iteration comes out, or three it years before they split the market like this. It doesn't seem like it's uncharacteristic for Nintendo as well. Like, um, it's sort of a similar situation is uh, Nintendo 64, for example, when um, uh, Donkey Kong 64, mainly, when that started to come out and games that were made after that, the console itself couldn't run it, so they started selling those games with the added uh, memory chip that gave the console more RAM, and it needed that to run those games. Oh, yeah. But so it seems, it seems like this it's not uncharacteristic for Nintendo to do this, and it's probably, like, it, people are maybe used to it by now. It could be, but I just feel like a lot of the features that they have in this new 3DS, I don't, I'm not a, a programmer, I don't understand all the technical aspects that went into this, but it seems like they sh should have had some of these features in the original 3DS, that it's kind of, you know, these, this extra like hardware yep. and this ex these, yep. these extra buttons. It kind of bothers me that, you know, and it's, imagine if you, like, you just bought a 3DS XL, like, a few months ago, thinking it was going to be a relevant console, because it just came out, like, a, a year or two ago, and then they say, oh, wait, well, now there's actually this new console that you need in order to play our, our most relevant games. Like, imagine if a, a new Pokemon, or a new Zelda, or a new, a new Mario game, or a new big franchise comes out, and it's going to be exclusive to the new 3DS. That would probably you know, kind of split their market base and create some problems. I'm hoping, like on one hand, I'm glad, so I'm kind of mixed about this, because I really like Xenoblade, and without this, it probably wouldn't be possible to bring Xenoblade to a portable console and get it more exposure. So on one hand, I'm kind of glad that Xenoblade is getting more exposure and that they're able to bring it to the portable market, and then on the other hand, I'm kind of uh, a little bothered that it, that only people who are getting this new 3DS are going to be able to play it. Yeah. But, um, it's, it's funny you should mention that, someone buying an XL and hoping it'll last for a while. My friend has been holding off on buying a 3DS for a very long time. They've recently just bought one of the Zelda limited edition ones that came out a couple of months ago. Oh. I got a message from her the other day, a very angry message about this new 3DS that got announced. Yeah, I don't blame them. I actually also got the Zelda 3DS. <laughs> See, I still got the original blue one, the aqua blue old one. So, oh. I like I hold on to a console. So, uh, like I did the same thing with the DS. Like I had the original aqua blue uh, Nintendo DS for so long until like the color was dying. Is when I decided, and it just so happened that was about the same time that 3DS came out. So, I made I made it last its lifetime. So I guess. This is pretty much the same thing. I'm using the old 3DS until the, the new one comes out. Oh, well, it pays off to be patient sometimes. I wouldn't say patient. I'd say tight is probably a better word. <laughs> well, it pays to be cheap then. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so there was another game, you know, coming out on the 3DS I wanted to talk about. The upcoming uh, Super Smash Brothers game. Yes, no, there's, there's definitely, like, I'm, I'm very excited. I will be buying it for both consoles. Um, I also feel like this, this game will actually function well with the new 3DS, with the, um, with the ZL and the ZR buttons in particular. Yeah. I feel like they're adding that in uh, specifically for the Smash Bros, like, to start off with. I'm expecting the, the C-Stick to work... work work good as well because like they s went out of their way to mention that it was like a GameCube c style C stick so I'm betting that'll allow you to use the smashes automatically just like yeah. you could with a GameCube C stick so that's that's something that's really helpful yeah no it definitely, it definitely was a good feature like um like I, I actually used the um the GameCube controller for a brawl like I'd go and plug it in and I'd sit like three meters closer to my TV than I should have uh, and actually use the old GameCube controller because it like it it was just easier to use than the uh, Wii controller and the nunchuck or like the classic controller or the Pro controller or anything else. 
It just yeah. kind of like better, but like I've always been a fan of the GameCube. Like I couldn't find a fault with that. I, I love that console. Yeah, the GameCube controller is a really nice one. It was it was easy to hold. I'm like the um. It was a big change from the 64 to the um the GameCube controller. Anyway, we're get, we're getting very off topic. <laughs> Um, well, I think the controller that we're using for the game is part of part of it because that seems like it's a big it's a big uh, issue because I think they got this new GameCube controller add-on for the Wii U almost ex specifically just so people could use the GameCube controller to play Smash Brothers because people are so used to that. Yeah, I'd say I'd, I'd but, also say like this this new 3DS is coming out in time is because they want the Smash Bros on the 3DS to feel like what it's going to be on the Wii U, not lacking as much because the Wii U has obviously got more more power to run a better game than the 3DS does, but not by much. As so they're adding those buttons onto the 3DS, I reckon will be a great benefit. It'll it'll give a sense of familiar that familiarity to like the players, and I reckon it'll help a lot. Yeah, I agree with that. There's one thing that kind of bothers me about uh, Smash Brothers, and that's uh, that they have the exclusive Smash Run mode on the 3DS, and that the game is releasing earlier on the 3DS. Because it's maybe there's, they're going to have extra modes for the Wii U that haven't been announced yet, but it seems like so far they're putting more focus on the 3DS version than they are the Wii U version. And I guess that's good from a software standpoint because there, a lot more people have the 3DS, so it means for starters they're going to sell more s or uh, software titles, and it also probably increases the odds that people are going to double dip and buy both the 3DS and the Wii U version, which you mentioned is what you're doing. And they also added this uh, soundtrack for people who register both on Club Nintendo, so that further incentivizes people to double dip. But the only thing I'm concerned about is that it's not going to incentivize people enough to get the new Wii U. It's like, because Smash Brothers is one of their major titles, I bet if they released it a lot later for the 3DS, then a lot of the big Smash Brothers fans would say, who have been holding off on getting a Wii U, might say, you know, I really love Smash Brothers. A lot of people would get the Wii U just to get Smash Brothers, but... If they're going to make the 3DS version more relevant, then a lot of people might just say, I think I'm going to hold off on the Wii U and just get Smash Brothers on the 3DS for now. And that again, that's good from a software standpoint, but from their long-term hardware standpoint, I don't know if that's going to be such a good idea, because then one, with the less people have a Wii U installed, the less games are going to come out for it, you know, the less, which is kind of a, a snowball effect, because when when they're not making as many games and other developers say, well, now it's, there's not much of a benefit to to put our third-party game also on the Wii U and spend the extra development time for it because the install base isn't big. So I really think they should have focused on the Wii U version more and, and promoted that more in order to in, improve their hardware in the long run. Yeah, no, uh, I reckon you've got, you've got a good point there, but I'd also argue that People have the Wii U. They're aiming to get Smash Bros. on the Wii U. Like, that's their target console they want to get it on. Like, they've all bought it for Mario Kart, and they're all excited. They're all playing it. They loved it. It's great. Mario Kart 8 pushed a hell of a lot of consoles. And now they've all got these consoles. They're waiting for Smash Bros., and they see an opportunity to get it, like, beforehand on the 3DS, but not the same. So they're going to go and buy it for their 3DS, see what it is, get all excited like this is amazing, and then buy it for the intended console that they were. Yeah, I see a lot, a like, lot of, a, like I, I said, it would probably improve the, the chances of people are going to dip, and I agree that a lot of people, or even most of the people who have the Wii U, are going to want to get Smash Brothers on the Wii U, but what I said was that the main the main people I'm talking about is the people who've been holding off, people who don't yet have a Wii U. I'm thinking if, if it's also on the 3DS and it comes out first on the 3DS, that doesn't really give them all that much incentive to go out and buy a, new, a Wii U. And I think if I last checked, like on VG charts, uh, uh, it, this isn't like 100% accurate, but 
their rating right now says that the Wii U sold about 7 million consoles, the 3DS sold about 44 million uh, units, and and the PlayStation 4, which is which has been out like a, a year less than the Wii U, the Wii U came out a year earlier, has sold over 10 million already. So, like it, it's the Wii U is doing a lot better than before, thanks to Mario Kart, but it still is not nearly as, as much as I think it should be. I think I think Nintendo is not looking like it. I think they're going to use Smash Bros to push the three the new 3DS. The new one's coming out. Like, they had Mario Kart 8 push the Wii U console. They're happy. I reckon they're going to sit on that and now use Smash Bros. to try and push their 3DS. And once they've done that, and they've got a good client base set up on both. Like, yeah, it's not it's not as good as the PS4 and the Xbox One, but I can't think of anywhere that predicted that the Wii U would be able to outdo uh, the next-gen consoles from Microsoft or Sony anyway. But do they really need to push the 3DS more? Like I said, it's already sold not, not, 44... Not the, not just the standard 3DS is in this new one that they're releasing. I reckon that's what they're intending. They want to push this new 3DS. It's because people are going to be like, I've already got a 3DS, and they're like, oh, well, these games can't be played on it. But they're going to use Smash Bros. to push this new 3DS, I reckon. Yeah, I guess they could do that. It's just, I um, think that pushing the Wii U is, uh, this is it, just it, my it, opinion, I'm not a, I'm not an more, industry expert, I just, I just personally think that pushing the Wii U right now is more important than pushing the, even the new 3DS, which, you know, already has a pretty established market and pr pretty established games for it. Yeah, but I, that, that, that's what I'm saying, it's already got established on the 3DS, which is why people wouldn't be inclined to go to the new 3DS unless they have some title to drive it. I guess, but like I said, you know, just having all those titles already available on the 3DS seems like a fairly good driver, in my opinion. Like, um, you know, all the Pokemon games, which, which are also available on the old 3DS, but... Exactly. It, it, it's ex exactly that. How are you going to push them to this new one? Can't just say, oh, we're, a couple of games are going to be exclusive to it because people are just not going to buy those games. Rather than buying a whole new console, you've got to think of a way to push it. That's honestly that's honestly what I think they're going to do with Smash Bros. Because they know Smash Bros. is a successful title. It's released three previous games and they've all been Smash hits. They did the same with Mario Kart 8 to push Wii U sales. And now conveniently this is coming out about the same time Smash Bros is. I reckon they're going to bundle it and push it and people are going to be right into their hands. And there's going to be a whole fluctuation of new 3DSs out there and it's not really going to matter if you've got an old or a new one. Mm, because it's right. going to have new ones. Mm, that's a really good theory. <laughs> so it makes more sense to try and push the Wii U console as much as possible. Because, I mean, like, maybe I'm biased because I have a Wii U and I kind of want the Wii U to succeed and I feel like the 3DS already has enough support, but again, I'm not a marketer, I'm not an industry analyst, so I don't know exactly what's going to drive the most profit for Nintendo. I'd, I'd, I'd love for the Wii U to succeed, but like I've got one as well. I, I reckon I play it four, four nights a week, like for a decent couple of hours, so... I honestly reckon the way that they're going to be able to make the jump from 3DS to new 3DS is they're going to need something to push it because people are just going to be like, no. Speaking of um, title-driven sales, Mario Kart 8 DLC. Oh yeah, I heard of that. So... I think the next DLC that's coming up is going to have a uh, Link, Mario in a new costume. I forget which one it was. Tanuki, yeah. Tanuki that was yeah. it. Is it Tanuki or is it Cat Mario? I think it's Cat Mario. I think Peach was in the cat costume. Oh yeah, and, no, it's Peach and Tanuki and Mario. I think it's yeah, I think it's Cat Peach and Tanuki Mario. So anyway. Yeah. I don't quite understand why they're calling it the Legend of Zelda DLC. If there's only, I think it's only what one character, Link, is actually going to be added in, and then just more Mario characters. Or is it Link and Zelda, and then more Mario characters? Zelda isn't a playable character, as far as I know. Yeah, no, it's um, 
But they're, do they're doing the same thing with the Animal Crossing one as well. Like, there's two Animal Crossing characters and then Dry Bowser. Now, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Animal Crossing um, series completely. I've, I've, I've played one of the... I, I, I did try to get into it. It seems like a cool concept. And then... Um, so I was, I was against buying the DLC for that, but I really want that Dry Bowser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I... I like Dry Bowser. That's a good addition, in my opinion. One thing that bothers me is that how they're bundling Link with Cat Peach and Tanuki Mario. So basically yeah. what they're doing is taking the most anticipated character, the most wanted character, and bundling him with the, t the two least wanted characters. So people, you know, like me, like I'm not a big fan on Cat Peach or Tanuki Mario, but I really want Link, so it's like a kind of get these yeah. two characters that are kind of just shoehorned in that I'm not really interested in. Yeah, I'll, just to I'll get like. But like they, they do it. have the four vehicles and eight courses, which that's actually, I'm, I think I'm more interested in the courses than I am the characters. Oh, I wouldn't mind the vehicles as well, see what they come out with. Like, I, I did like the Mercedes-Benz up uh, DLC, the pre-DLC. It, it did add a good spin onto it. I was a bit curious as to why there was Mercedes-Benz DLC, but... I wasn't going to argue because it was free. But, uh, so I, I reckon the carts and the courses are going to be, like, what drives it rather than the characters. Because, like you said, like, people want Link and Cat Peach and Tanuki Mario are just kind of great third and fourth wheel. Like, I don't understand this, though, because they already have, what is it, Baby Princess Peach, Regular Princess Peach... Gold Princess Peach. That's that's like the most used character online is Gold Princess Peach. Do they do they really need more Princess Peach? It's like like would it really have been that difficult for them to get like a sprite and some and use like an old voice actor for for I don't know Boo or or Funky Kong or one of the other what other popular characters that they have in this? Even like hmm. like I don't. Now, I would have loved to bring Funky Kong over to the new one. Uh, that was my character on Mario Kart 7. Yeah, like they they don't have to make him broken like before. They could even nerf him, but do they have to... And like Tanuki Mario, like we already... Like I understand what's called Mario Kart, but we already got Baby Mario, and we got Regular Mario, and we got Metal Mario. It seems yeah. so excessive and redundant to then... Like what, what next? Are they going to have Fire Flower Mario and... Uh, and then we gotta have Star Man Mario, and then we gotta have um, we got Ice Flower. Um, like, are they gonna go through all the power ups? Just seems kind of ridiculous. To, to yeah, what what I reckon they really should have done is um, added like an optional, like maybe call it like the Super Mario World DLC pack, where it comes with Dry Bowser, Tanuki Mario, and Cat Peach, and you had the option of buying that if you want, and then releasing like the Legend of Zelda pack have Link, Zelda, and then. Um, cars and courses, and then done the same with Animal Crossing. I'm just saying that the way they're doing it is to inc bundle the most wanted character with the least wanted characters. I still don't understand why they, like, is it really that difficult for them to just, like, take a sprite and update it for the new game and to take the voice actors from the old game and to put it in it? Like on, like on Project M even, they just had hackers putting in Mewtwo from, from Melee. And that was just like hackers and independent people doing it. So it doesn't. It seems like Nintendo should be able to do better. But like, I'm complaining too much. You know, overall, I'm kind of excited about the DLC. I, I want to see what the new eight courses are, or I guess 16 courses when you count the two packs. Yeah. Just been seeing, like you said, the new vehicles, Dry Bowser. That that's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I I kind of like the idea of the villager from Animal Crossing being in. It's kind of nice that they're uh, expanding onto some other series. Yeah, so I like I like the idea where they've got with it. I'm not a fan of my uh, of Animal Crossing itself, but I like the idea that they've got. So, uh, yeah, there's also going to be, I think it's eight alternate colors for Yoshi and Shy Guy if you get both DLC packs. And if yes. I remember correctly, like one DLC pack is eight dollars, and then both of them are twelve dollars. So it seems like anybody who's interested enough to buy one DLC pack is gonna want to buy both of them. Because why would you want to 
spend eight dollars for one pack but then not want to spend an additional four to get the other eight courses it seems like even if you didn't like the characters just the, the courses alone would make you, me want to spend the extra four dollars for it um, so, uh, it, it kind of seems like going down into the season pass argument sort of like people buy the season pass they get like four dlc three of them they'll like one of them they'll hate now, I'm, I've, I've never bought into the whole season pass thing. Like, I know, I know it's probably stupid, I'd spend more money, especially with Titanfall. When I was playing that, like, all it gave you was multiplayer maps and everything, but um, I, I bought them individually. I think it cost me about $6 more in the long run, but um, it's because I didn't buy them all at the same time. Like, because I didn't, I didn't know if I liked them or not. And honestly, I didn't really like um, the, the second one so far. Like, I think I played on one of their maps once. That yeah, seems reasonable. You know, back what we were saying with Smash Brothers, I think, I think in, in an interview, uh, someone said that uh, they were like that they were were still unsure if they were going to add DLC to Smash Brothers, but I'm betting like you know seventy or eighty percent chance that they are going to add the DLC to Smash Brothers if they say that they're uncertain about it because you know they're doing it for Mario Kart and my, they know trust, that there's a lot of demand for it. I tell you my trust has been completely ruined with DLCs because um they're always going to make DLC it, because they know people will buy it. Like the the biggest classic one was um when Dark Souls 2 was released. They went on this massive rant saying they're not going to have DLCs, not a chance. It was this massive like four month thing about not having DLC. The week after it got released, they said, oh, yeah, we're having three DLC packs. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I never believe a word any developer says about DLC now. <laughs> well, like like I said, they didn't say they weren't going to have it. They just said they haven't, pl they they haven't, don't have a, they haven't planned on it, so they're kind of uncertain. They said they're not opposed to it, but it's not, we're working on the original game now. But, um, that will be. That'll be an interesting game to have, um, like, adding characters into. Like, I know they've already got a massive range of characters. But, like, they've got DLC where you can have, like, other characters or, like, the kind of, like, Smash Bros. Melee DLC pack where it brings, like, a couple of characters from Melee that weren't uh, in the final cut. Same thing with Brawl, maybe. Like, just, just that concept of, like, hey, remember these characters from Melee? Well, they're still here. Buy them for four ninety nine. I would kind of be more interested in buying new characters, especially third-party ones, because I, f I feel like if if they're going to be charging me for characters that either were in Melee or were in Brawl, that it's essentially like saying, we cut these characters out, and now we're, so we can now charge you to download them. But, but it, doesn't if, seem like un, like, it doesn't seem like unusual behavior to do that, though. Yeah, I guess, but it's just... I feel like Nintendo has been generally pretty good when it comes to DLC, that they're not as bad as the other companies, so I kind yeah. of hope that they don't charge us to bring back old characters. Now what I would be okay with, like if it was a third party character especially, because then I could understand, oh well they gotta do negotiation with the company, maybe they're paying a royalty to get the new character involved. It's probably more work to get in a third party character. so. I probably wouldn't be as averse to that. Hmm. But well, I think it's a good option for them to have DLC for Smash Bros. Like people are gonna people are gonna use it. Like I'm, as long as they don't release it as a big pack and like have a whole bunch of characters that half of them you don't want. Have yeah. the option. Like if they do release like for example they release like eight characters and you have the option to buy all eight, you can pick four or like you can buy them individually. Probably so, Almost no matter what happens, I'm such a big fan of Smash Brothers. I'd probably buy all the characters, even if it was a rehash from Melee. Like, I'd be annoyed about it, but I'd probably still do it just because I play Smash Brothers so often. And I guess that's what Nintendo's counting on, so... <laughs> well, I, when, when I find a character that I like on Smash Brothers, I stick with it. I yeah. don't I really ever vary. So, like, you do the character that... Like, I know I'm not going to use, I'm not going to buy it. Fair enough. Have you have you seen the leaks for Smash Brothers of the new characters? I did see the screenshot of that. Okay. I didn't really look much into it. Because, mm. um, like, 
it, 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 cause it was it was it was what was it? It was leaked by a developer, wasn't it? I I don't think it was a developer. I think it was just some. I don't. Know, I guess just some anonymous leaker. They have the like screenshots. They have the um, copywriting or something, and um, like they were taking images and they got leaked. What some of the images showed is that it had the name ESRB on the bottom. So some people theorize that these were videos that Nintendo sent to the ESRB, so the ESRB could rate, give them a rating like you know T and M for mature. And somehow that got leaked, but that's not that's not really confirmed. That's just kind of speculated because of the name. Yeah. Uh, could be, but nah, I reckon it would be a good lineup. But I, I wouldn't be opposed to DLC. But um, I reckon with Mario Kart, they they trying like the courses and everything is really just to all the courses and Link is what they're really using to drive that first DLC is because. Yeah. You did have the option to buy to in Cat Mario, let's face it. I don't reckon many people would. Yeah, I don't think so either. But which is whatever they gotta do to drive sales, I mean, like, you've gotta make money somehow. Yeah. And it's not as if people aren't gonna buy it, so Yeah, I guess they're just counting on Link in the course selling it and then they, I don't like they don't really want to Tanuki Mario and Cat each, but they're just kind of along for the deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I might like try them out, but I don't reckon I'd use them. Because yeah. I, I, mean, I mainly used to drive with the heavy characters anyway, so... Oh, I also wanted to talk about the Amiibos a bit. So I haven't much into these. Is like... I've, I've kind of stayed away from the whole concept where it's been like Skylanders and Disney Infinity. Now, it looks cool, but I don't want to have to go buy each figurine. Well, you don't have to buy all of them. You could just buy one of them if you like. Because I can see, buy... like, so far they've released 12, and I can already see about six on here that I'm not going to buy. Like, I'm not going to buy the Wii Fit Instructor. I'm not going to buy Fox McCloud. I'm not going to buy the Villager. I'm not going to buy Peach. Like, I'm... Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, if you even just, you could just buy, like, one or two, or you don't necessarily have to buy any of them. It's a, it's, a, it's a really cool concept. It's really just like, I don't like the fact that, I'd say it was mainly Skylanders that ruined me. Is it like, you need these characters to pass certain bits in the game. Have you played much Skylanders? I haven't played it, no. There was, um, oh, my cousin owns it and I was over playing with him and we were stuck at one bit and it was almost impossible to do unless you went out and bought this other one. And that just kind of really just just drew the line for me with Amiibos, and I was like... Yeah, I can see how that'd be a problem. But Smash that, Brothers, it doesn't look like there's any situation where you're going to need them. Do you understand how it's going to work with Smash Brothers? Or maybe I should just go over that, just for the audience, you know, if so you're I'm not familiar with it. Again, so, yeah. So... So, these are... These are figure, physical figurines, kind of like action figures which store data on a particular character. So, as you mentioned, there are 12 characters, the Villager, Pikachu, Donkey Kong, Link, Mario, Wii Fitness Trainer, Peach, Samus, Yoshi, and Kirby have all been confirmed. And so, you customize your Amiibo's uh, stats, moves, and you can level it up by fighting, and they level up quickly by fighting with other Amiibo's. So it's kind of like just a little custom character, computer-controlled character you have that you can bring into the game and maybe put it on your team or maybe fight it against friends. So, I I mean, my general impression of them is, and I'm just speculating, is I think they're going to be a little, maybe like a little more powerful than just the regular uh, human-controlled players like not in terms of skill but maybe like they have farther knockback or they do more damage but I'm not entirely sure it's just I think what, what other purpose would leveling up have if it didn't increase the strength of the character and I think they're gonna want something to drive it because they want like what they said in the initial reveal video was like oh beat up your friends with the, the amiibo so I'm guessing they're I'm guessing rather than having really intelligent AI they're gonna do it where it has really like powerful moves that can 
you know, have a really strong knock back. I'm also wondering if it keeps customization because you can change the colors in Smash Bros. You've always been able to do that. Yeah. wonder if with this amiibo it kind of holds how you customize that character. Hmm. It probably does. I th yeah, I think it said you can customize your amiibo's stats. I'm not completely sure about the custom moves, but that's probably something you can do. Oh, and they also said that Mario Kart 8 and uh, Mario Party 10 would also feature Amiibos at a later date. I reckon, I, uh, I reckon um, Mario Party 10 would be alright. I can't really see how they maybe differ from just picking a character in that, but like maybe with the Amiibos for Mario Kart 8, like you get a special cart with it or something. Yeah, it's probably going to be a similar concept to Smash Brothers. Again, I'm just speculating, but I imagine it's going to be your uh, computer-controlled racer that levels up. So the more you use it, the higher level it gets, the faster it gets, the more uh, weight it gets, so it gets harder to knock around. Uh, but I don't know how like, you'd be able to apply that to Mario Party. And that's probably the same thing. You just get a computer-controlled player, maybe like if you... If you don't have a friend with you and you want someone on your team, you can use your amiibo on your team. Maybe, maybe you can like have a, a battle of four amiibos to see which one wins. Something along those lines. All right, that'll be pretty interesting. Um, uh, it's definitely like they put they put a better spin on how like how from what the other developers have done with. I call it augmented reality things, but um, it will be really interesting to see how they come out. Like I know, like I purchased a couple of them for Smash Bros. and we go see how it goes. And I did notice that it also says this is the first set of figurines. I'd like to see what they come out with next. Like, are they going to do the rest of the characters for Smash Bros.? Mm, hasn't been confirmed yet. It might. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'd like to see them do it for the rest of the characters because the the ones on this list. I don't really use Mario would probably be the one I'd use the most on that list. I mean, obviously, if there are characters that haven't been revealed yet, they're not going to announce the Amiibos for them because that would s reveal the characters. <laughs> We're so close to the release date, we I reckon we'd already know 90% of the characters anyway. Yeah, but it hasn't quite gotten to the release date yet, so I'm, I'm guessing they want to save some characters for the actual release and not spoil all of them. We'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah. So, so I guess the Amiibos, how they are automatically compatible with the new 3DS, that ties into what you were saying before about how they're going to use uh, Smash Brothers to push the new 3DS. Yeah, no, it, it definitely seems like a good marketing move for Nintendo to do that. It's how I reckon that's how they're just going to push it across. It's it seems that like they were they were waiting for Mario Kart 8 as a flagship for the Wii U. It worked, and I guess they're going to hope that Smash Bros. can push the new 3DS console. Yeah, that's probably the case. All right, so that about wraps up our video. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and we'll.